Hey guys, it's Sandro here. In today's video is a look at my favourite and most used machine polishing pads, from cutting to polishing foam pads, microfiber and wool pads, as well as some information on them that will hopefully help some of you out. So let's get to it, starting with my favourite foam cutting pads. If I had to choose a single foam pad as my all-time favourite and most used, it would be the Lake Country Blue HDO foam pad. The real benefit of this pad is that it can cut just as well as most foam cutting pads, but it tends to leave most of them for dead when it comes to its gloss levels, as it's just amazing how well it can finish on most paint types. So in many cases, depending on your compound, machine and technique choice, it can work exceptionally well as a single stage correction pad to both cut and finish with outstanding results, more so than most other foam cutting pads. So its main pro would be its performance, with its large cutting to finishing range, but it's also an exceptionally well balanced and smooth running pad with great vibration absorption due to its middle cushion foam layer, and it's also quite a reasonably durable pad. The main cons of this pad would firstly be price, as it's also the most expensive foam pad here. Secondly would be maintenance, because it honestly takes me twice as long to wash this pad compared to others. And thirdly, you really have to get a little heat into this pad and soften it up before it starts working well. But I quite honestly don't care all that much about those cons because the performance and results I get with this pad are just so amazingly good. Second place would have to go to the Shimate yellow foam pad because it's just incredible value costing about one third of the previous Lake Country pad yet it's still able to produce fantastic results on a variety of paints, addressing a variety of defects. Now all in all, it's not made to the exceptional precise and quality that you'd expect from a Lake Country or Ribes pad, but it's also by no means your typically cheap and nasty Chinese eBay pad, and for the cost it's actually surprisingly good. So the pros of this pad, apart from its fantastic value, is its great cutting ability matched to quite a good finish, especially on harder to medium paints. It's also a very durable pad and super easy to clean and blow out from a user experience perspective. The cons of this pad would be that it's a little oversized in my opinion and could be a touch smaller for more precise polishing and it's also not quite as super smooth and well balanced as more expensive pads, but it's honestly not that bad and amazing for the price. Third place goes to the Ripper's Light Cutting Green Foam Pad. Now I personally think this is one of the best foam cutting pads on the market, as it really does have a fantastic cutting and finishing ability on many paint types with various compounds and techniques. So from a result perspective, it's up there with the best. However, from a cost and value perspective, it just seems to deteriorate way too quick at least for me personally, so its durability has always let me down. So the pros of this pad are performance, which like I said is really great in so many cases and situations, and being a Rupes pad it's also just about as smooth and well balanced as it gets with a great user experience. And it also comes in all backing plate sizes from 6 inches all the way down to 1 inch, which I personally really appreciate. The real con of this pad, as mentioned, is durability, which then leads to value. And being that it's still a rather expensive pad, it's actually the only reason why I don't love this pad as much as I could. As an honourable mention, I had to include the Lake Country Blue SDO foam pad, which came out late last year. This pad uses the same foam found in the Blue HDO foam pad but does away with that extra inner cushion layer to produce a far simpler and far more affordable pad, costing about half the price of the HDO variant. So all in all, this SDO pad can certainly produce almost identical results to the original HDO pad, so it truly is another fantastic pad. However, it doesn't run quite as smooth or with as little vibration as the HDO variant, and you'll also notice that it does heat up at a faster rate which can cause the pad to flatten down more easily, but you can combat this by swapping out your pads more frequently. So the main pro of this pad would be its fantastic value matched to a great performance. 
The cons would be that it's just not quite as smooth and vibration free as its more expensive HDO variant. And once again, is a more time consuming pad to clean and it unfortunately doesn't come in 2 and 1 inch variants. So onto some foam polishing pads. At the top of my list, first place goes to the Lake Country Orange HDO foam pad. Now just like all foam polishing or finishing pads, this pad isn't going to have a great cutting ability. Though on softer paints, it can certainly produce quite a good defect removal result. But its greatest strength, above all, is its finishing results with outstanding amounts of gloss and clarity on just about any paint. Its inner cushion layer additionally makes this a comfortable, low vibration pad to work with. And unlike the blue HDO foam pad, it doesn't initially need heat to get going. And it's quite easy and quick to clean. So the main pro of this pad for me is that it's quite rare not to be able to finish perfectly on just about any paint when using it. And that's more so than any other pad I own. It's also quite a durable and pleasurable and comfortable pad to use. The cons of this pad is once again that it's quite an expensive pad. And it also frustratingly doesn't come in 2 and 1 inch variants. In second place is the Ripper's Yellow Foam Polishing Pad. In all honesty guys, I could repeat 90% of what I just said about the orange Lake Country pad about this Ripper's pad. So it's just easier trying to explain their subtle differences. As a whole, I would say that this Ripper's pad has just a touch more cut than the equivalent Lake Country pad, which I'd say the Lake Country pad has just a touch better finish. But it's really very close, and you wouldn't even tend to see these differences unless you're working on quite a soft and sensitive paint. I'd also say that in my opinion, Ripper's does make the most perfectly balanced pads, so they do tend to run the smoothest. But the additional inner cushion of the Lake Country HDO pad does tend to make it a little more vibration free. So it's kind of a stalemate in that way. And although durability is quite decent with both these pads, I'd also tend to give a slight advantage to the Lake Country. But I'll also mention that the Rupes pads, at least for me here locally, are a touch cheaper. Lastly, I'll give an additional advantage to Rupes for making this pad and also all their DA pads in two and one inch variants, which I hugely appreciate. In third place is the Shimate Red Foam Finishing Pad. Unlike the previous polishing pads, this is really a finer finishing pad, so it tends to excel on soft to medium paints rather than harder automotive paint, and is also a great drilling and wax application pad due to its very non-aggressive foam. But the main reason this pad is here is because I'm able to use it time and time again with great results especially on softer paints and when my other pads just aren't finishing quite as well. The pros of this pad is its great finishing ability on sensitive paints, as well as being an extremely durable and well-priced pad that comes in every single backing plate size all the way down to a quarter inch size. The cons would be that it does have very little cut, so it isn't the best pad for hard paints. And its build quality, although good, isn't to the level of more expensive premium pads. The honorable mention in this category also goes to the Lake Country SDO Orange Foam Pad. So much like the previous blue SDO pad, this one is also a much more affordable option compared to the orange HDO pad. And although it does lose a little of its vibration insulation and the smoothness of the HDO, this is still an amazing pad that is very well made and balanced and produces great results on a variety of paints. So the pros of this pad would mainly be that it's a better value option compared to its bigger brother HDO, but can still deliver the results and is also a durable and easy to clean pad. The cons would be that it isn't quite as smooth to work with and it is a little more susceptible to heat and unfortunately also doesn't come in 2 and 1 inch variants. So onto some microfiber pads. In first place is actually the most recent microfiber pad that I've tried, which is the Lake Country Microfiber Polishing Pad. All in all, this will be considered to be an intermediate or one step microfiber pad, so it has a balance of cut and finish. 
Now personally, I'd say that you still need to be working on hard to medium paints in order for this pad to finish well, but that can really be said about microfiber as a whole. But I've really been liking this pad purely based on the results, which seem to finish noticeably better than most microfiber cutting pads with just a minimal loss in cut. Though compared to almost any foam pad, it'll still have far more cut. So the pros of this pad would be that it's perhaps the best balance of cut and finish for a microfiber pad that I've personally used. And it's actually reasonably durable and reasonably priced, being cheaper than some other leading microfiber pads. The cons would be that it's not going to cut quite as much as an equivalent microfiber cutting pad or finish quite as well as an equivalent microfiber finishing pad. And with no center hole like the HDO version, it won't disperse heat quite as well, though it will tend to finish a little better. In second place is the Lake Country HDO microfiber cutting pad. Now when working on harder paints with severe defects, this really tends to be my go-to pad, as it cuts exceptionally well, yet still finishes extremely well or at least reasonably good on those paint types. Also, for a microfiber pad, it disperses heat about as good as any other one that I've tried. So being that excess heat is such a problem with microfiber pads, as in extreme conditions, it can certainly damage paint. It's also the main reason why I like this pad so much. Now on medium paints, it won't tend to finish quite as well, but it'll still be quite reasonable. And on softer paints, I just really wouldn't tend to use it, which is the case with most microfiber cutting pads. So the main pro of this pad is its exceptional cut matched to a good finishing ability and the fact that it's a cooler running microfiber pad that's also quite durable and reasonably priced. The cons would be that unless it is quite a hard paint, it won't tend to finish all that well. And the center hole additionally reduces its finishing abilities. And lastly, if you are working with microfiber pads, you really have to blow them out with compressed air after each set of passes. In third place, I have to give credit to the microfiber pad that really started it all, which is the Meguiar's microfiber cutting disc. In all honesty, it's still a fantastic pad well over 10 years on. And I'd also add that even to this day, I'd say it actually cuts a touch better, maybe five to 10% more than the Lake Country microfiber cutting pad. So the only real issue for me with this pad is the excess heat that it generates and struggles to dissipate which the Lake Country pad does a much better job at. Now part of this is the lack of a center hole, but the other part is the foam itself, which just tends to stay hotter for longer. But having said that, you could just cycle through more of these pads more often to allow them to cool down to try and combat that. So the pros of this pad would be that it cuts just as good, if not better, than almost any other microfiber pad, yet it still finishes quite good as a whole, especially on harder paints. The main con of this pad, as I mentioned, is the heat issue. But beyond that, at least for me locally here, it's the equally most expensive pad in this whole review. An honorable mention in this microfiber section goes to the Buff and Shine Eurofiber pad. Now a lot of what I said about the Lake Country microfiber polishing pad can be said about this pad in relation to its performance. Though I'd also say that this pad cuts perhaps just a touch better than the Lake Country microfiber polishing pad, which tends to finish a touch better than this pad. But all in all, this is a great and more unique microfiber pad that also tends to run cooler and also feel really precise due to its smaller form factor. However, the issue I have with this pad is actually a feature that many people like about it, which is that it's the exact same size as your machine's backing plate with no overhang or buffer zone. Almost all polishing pads are slightly larger than the backing plate sizes, as if the backing plate mistakenly hits the car's paint, it'll almost immediately burn through it, which I'll admit actually happened to me once many years ago. So in all honesty, I just don't feel entirely all that comfortable using a pad without that extra buffer zone. But in saying that, it is a more precise pad and in almost all cases, you really shouldn't have that issue. Lastly is wall pads, starting with my single favorite pad in the world, which is the Ripper's Yellow Medium Wall Pad. 
In my opinion and experience, there's no other pad in existence that has such versatility and is able to work on extremely hard to extremely soft paints with a massive range of cut to finish. So it's really the kind of pad that can just do it all. Used with more aggressive compounds, it can cut with outstanding results and used with super fine polishes, it can finish brilliantly like no other wool pad before it. Additionally, it runs cooler than microfiber pads and is just a step behind them in cut, but several steps ahead in its finishing abilities. RIP has really changed the way we think about wool pads with these new refined stranded wool pads as I just never believed that a wool pad could perform like this just a couple of years ago. So the pros of this pad is that it has more successful applications and options than just about any other pad, with truly exceptional results and it also comes in 2 and 1 inch sizes. The cons of this pad is that it's really not all that durable compared to most other pads. So I do really wish I could get more life out of these pads, but their amazing performance makes up for it, at least for me. Now if the yellow Ripper's wool pad didn't exist, then their blue wool pad would definitely be my favourite. In all honesty, these two pads are extremely similar in many ways, with the real difference between them being that this blue pad cuts about 20% better or so than the yellow pad and the yellow pad finishes about 20% or so better than this wool pad. So on mid to hard paints, the blue pad may be a better option for a single stage correction, while on soft to mid paints, the yellow may be the better choice, or at least in general. So the pros and cons of this pad are identical to the yellow wool pad, being that it's just an outstanding pad for so many situations, but just lets you down a little by its durability. Third place goes to the Lake Country SDO Low Lint Wool Pad. Firstly, Lake Country really shouldn't call this a low lint pad because it lints way more than the root best pads and pretty much like almost any other wool pad. But with that aside, this is easily the most aggressive pad in this review and cuts more than any other pad I've ever tried, including all the microfiber pads here. Now it cuts extremely well on DA polishes but placed on a rotary with a bit of speed and pressure, you'll be amazed at how it can level down severe defects even on the hardest of paints. So although it's a pad I like to reserve until I've explored less aggressive alternatives, it's also a pad that I'm so glad to have when nothing else is working. So the obvious pro of this pad would be that it cuts like a mother's farmer, as well as being so well priced and durable. The cons of this pad is that it tends to finish quite terribly and takes a lot of work to refine its finish, as well as being quite rough with a lot of vibration, so it really doesn't have a great user experience. Last but not least, an honourable mention goes to the Lake Country HDO Low Lint Wool Pad, which incidentally also lints quite substantially. All in all, this pad is yet again very similar to the SDO Wool Pad in many ways, with the real difference being that it won't cut quite as much, but it'll also tend to finish just a touch better. But beyond that, it won't run anywhere near as rough as the SDO variant, so it's a lot nicer to use. Having said that, I'd also say that it cuts just a touch better than most microfiber cutting pads. And it's also worth mentioning that unlike the Ripper's wool pads that do tend to finish better than microfiber cutting pads, this wool pad won't tend to finish anywhere near as well as most microfiber pads. So the real pros are that it's got amazing cut while still being comfortable to use and having a slightly better finish than the STO wool pad variant. The cons are that it's never going to be a single stage pad, unlike most other pads in this review, or be the best choice on softer paints, and it's also equally the most expensive pad in this entire review. Now there are many more great pads out there that weren't part of this review, as this video was really about sharing the pads that I personally use and have great success with. But in any case, I really hope you guys enjoyed and found this video useful. Please share this video, like, comment and subscribe to this channel to show your support for this content, and I'll see you guys soon.